Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the Prairie Sprint Enduro Series. We've got some big jumps and some off-road. And this might be too much for me without seeing someone else do it. <laughs> uh, no thanks. <laughs> Not that big looking, but... The landing itself was kind of uphill, so it made for kind of a weird shoot off as much as aggressively as you can, but then you might land uphill into trees. That guy's cool. Doing a big enduro course on the bigger bikes. There's always a guy. We have the juniors here in the morning going off. This is like the beginners and the learner women, so they're going off. You go over the bridge instead of the jump. I did not hit the jump. I actually only saw one guy hit it from a distance. If we had had a guy, it would have been nice to watch someone, but that's all right. There you go. Now we're getting some of the faster minis coming. This here was one of the funnest sections at the bottom of that hill. You can just pin it like fourth, fifth gear. I mean, as fast as you want. You're coming up a pretty steep hill. Obviously, the video never looks as aggressive as it is. But overall, fantastic event. So, Prairie Sprint Enduro, what you're doing is three tests of a cross-country course, which is this one here, and it goes off into trees. Fairly wide, fairly easy to ride. You know, it's got the technicality to it, but it, it's definitely that third, fourth, fifth gear sections where you can go a lot faster. This is the most open section of it all. Most of it's in the trees. And then there is an Enduro test, three tests of those. And that you're going a lot more technical for, so a lot more turns. You're still in that second, maybe third gear to get up there. Lots more turns, a lot more technical. Bigger ruts, everything. This towards the end of the day was a fantastic jump. You could hit it like fifth gear and All never right, hit the bottom. The we did the practice. I was going to do enduro first, but... As I said, I was going to do the enduro first, but so was everyone else, so I got in line for the cross trust to try that out. It's super fun, super fast. Three timed ones. Each lap you finish, the time ends, and you restart a second time, and then it all averages out. They give you all the fancy details. I don't remember them all. Somewhere around 39 kilometers an hour average for the cross country and 29 for the enduro. So still pretty nippy. This grass field area was like the hardest because you come in so fast. But then every once in a while you hit a piece of grass which has never been touched before. As you can see the fences down there and uh, lose it. Super fast, super flowy though. This was on a cross country ski area hill so it's, it's got some really good terrain to it. It's got like lots of plateaus, steep inclines and then a plateau, steep incline and then a plateau. That one I should have hit a little faster, I think. Oh, we're nipping along pretty fast in. Towards the end, I don't think you hit below third. There's maybe one hill where you go down to second, but for the most part, you're in third, fourth, and fifth, so we're cruising along pretty easily here. And it could have gone faster. Three more laps which they do have a September series too. If anyone's interested, it would be sweet to do again. If it's the exact same one, you'd be able to really crank up the times. They were doing it yesterday on the Saturday too. This was a Sunday and it's all I could get to, but it was well worth the drive. For me, it's about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes to get to it. So not too terrible. Really well organized. You actually got to do a practice lap, which only took like 20 minutes, if that, slower pace which is pretty rare for a lot of these events, so it was really fun to do that. This was fun. Coming downhill, kind of got a little chicane in the middle there, you can shortcut through. And the goal is to be as fast as you can. Yeah, there you go. As fast as you can. This grass, so like I say, there's like patches of grippy dirt, and then just that slick, never touched grass. It's fun though. Not complaining in any which way. It keeps it spicy, keeps it lively. It's been a busy summer. It's been good to get to these events. Missed most of the events come spring. 
This one was an extra one which they added and it's been a really cool event. I do enjoy the kind of finish one lap, take a break. I didn't actually take any breaks. I just thought I'd stiffen up. It was much easier to just go, 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 go. The biggest break you got was waiting in line to take on another lap. I know some people were taking like five, 10 minute breaks. I just think I'd stiffen up and it would be so hard to get back out there and get into that rhythm, that flow. Like I, I like going, I like flow, flow, flow. And once you lose that, you know, you fall or stop for 10 minutes. It's tricky to get back into that mindset. Yeah, here we go. Bit of a rough, rutted out downhill here. You've got those braking bumps. You want to be able to go in a little faster. Because of the braking bumps right there, you gotta slide down a little bit slower than you want. And then this jump around this corner here, same thing, you wanna go faster, but unfortunately you just launch into the corner. Here's that starting hill. We'll go much faster, it's super fun. I mean, it's like fourth gear wide open. This corner would have again been better and better each lap. You just flow, like the hill just perfectly lines up. No matter how fast you go, I don't think you'd mess up. The Kawasaki I am on has been a rebuilt top end new cam chain, and it is running in top shape. Like I am super pleased with it. The guys at Transcam Motorsport in town here did an absolutely fantastic job. It was quick, it was easy, it was like $400 cheaper than I expected it to be. And uh, yeah, this thing starts quick, it rides quick, so much snappier. I didn't realize how much snappiness you lost with the top end being that one. I just thought it was like the start end, compression so low. But overall acceleration is significantly better. This was fun too, a little rough rutted out uphill. You gotta keep as much speed as you can but you kind of get pulled left and right, left and right, and it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper, you're losing speed. Probably should have shifted there a second. And there is some technical stuff, like that little lump right there, you come down a hill and then there's like a little divot in the ground which really slams out your suspension if you're not ready for it. As you can see, this all at least like one track to wide. I don't think it really, in the cross country course, went smaller than that. In the Enduro, you are more single track kind of setup. But this is all super wide stuff. So you've got a lot more forgiveness, a lot more speed in it, and a lot more room for error. section here where the fence got torn down at the end and a few people went off course but I don't know what I was looking at there who knows this section here should have kept more speed through I knew it every time it's a sharp kind of left hand uphill and then you come to a jump And the jump is a unique one because it kind of just bucks you straight up high. You don't really have anywhere to go or anywhere to land. It's not as smooth takeoff landing as you hope. So you do have to take it a little slow without just launching to the moon. I mean, I think we're only around 13 minute lap times, which is pretty good. Some of the pros were getting, I think, under the 10, but I was pretty happy with it. This section here is fun. Ready, coming up. This next one here, I think. Oh yeah, okay, so you go down this corner, 
should have kept more speed again, but it happens. This section here, flowy, fun, and then most of all, there's like a little floater coming up here. Just an off camber, like, you don't even see it right here. Like that, you heard me landing, like it was so fun. And you don't really take off, you just keep your position in the air as if you're floating. some flat out section. This was fast. Obviously it's a wide track, but obviously it felt a little tied up when you're actually riding it. It was still fun to have this. A lot of the races I do are more the enduro style. Sort of very technical, very single track. And it's very seldom you got the fourth gear kind of cruising pace here that we have. And especially this top end fourth gear. So we're really pushing it here. This pipe right there, you see that yellow thing on the floor? Man, first lap round, I accelerated on that and absolutely slid out. It was good though, I mean, you picked up the bike, it didn't even stop. Again, that top end rebuild, new camp chain, it's been perfect. This was rutted out, you can hardly see it, but it was a big mess underneath that. They even have warning signs telling you to stay to the left because the right side was so bad and the cones there. A little jump to a straight uphill. This is just up, 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 up. Still uphill, still climbing. Lex flat, but that was a big climb. And then those warning signs there, it's pretty much a straight cliff off the left side there. Ugh, you just rewatch all this stuff and you're like, I could have gone so much faster. Why wasn't I maxed out with the trial? But this is three laps in. I did two of the cross country, two of the enduro, one of one, or two cross country, one enduro, one cross country, and then two enduro. I honestly do not remember. I remember doing the cross country one first. It was fantastic. I was like, I have to just, uh, there's where the tape's down. I decided to give myself a slight time penalty going through this section significantly slower than I would have just because I missed that one loop. So all through here I'm going nice and slow just to give myself a bit of a time penalty. And then I'm like, okay, I think we're good now. And we'll kick it back. There you go. I even remember that as I was driving. Body position is just so important. You you get lazy sometimes, but if you get on top of that front wheel, scoot forward on the bike, it makes a huge difference for those corners, especially the rutted out ones. If you want your front wheel to just take it, yeah. So I did stop in between my last cross test and my enduro test. The fuel, I just wasn't sure how far everything was. I don't keep track of that. I don't keep track of any of these times when I'm actually racing. I find it better just to zone out. I know I have to go faster. There's no way I'm the fastest guy out there. So there's no worry about going too fast. That I need to use off. Yeah, for example. Here I am mumbling.
sections like this. I'm like, man, why am I not going fast? I mean, these are some off-camera weird corners. And in the video, it's hard to see how rugged it is, like how aggressive it looks. You know, it's so fast. test is done so here I went and filled up and then got straight back in line like I didn't I had a sip of water and that's it it was fun though really fun oh, yeah. we're fuel and we're heading right back out to the enduro oh, test final one setup was nice lots of parking Super fast start. It was actually weird coming back to. Yeah, it was weird coming back to this racetrack. Um, that puddle there, which was throwing me off. It was hard to like slow down my pace and switch to technical turn, get on top of your tank, as opposed to just wide out, pull back, and hope for the best of the cross country course. This is my third lap. By then it was much better. The first lap of this, I, this little section here was so slow and terrible. I just couldn't get in the flow of like technical bumps and tighter track. And this isn't even tight yet, like it's still super wide here. There you go. See that flow? Pretty solid, pretty solid. Could be better, every time could always be better. But that's pretty small, and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, first lap felt a little rough and rutted. Second and third lap started feeling like, okay, people are breaking through these ruts, it's softening up, it's getting a little more rideable. And that may have been also the difference to the first lap, to the third, not just I'm coming off a different racetrack. Now it's like this one's got chewed up and is actually rideable. Whereas before it was very, very single tracked. Okay, messed up this both times. That rock right there, that spray painted pink thing you saw, was a giant rock. And the first two laps I came around the corners. Slow, but at least it was controlled. Yeah, that's the big thing. I came around the corners and hammered into that rock ricocheted off into the second smaller rock on the left and nearly flew off the handlebars and buying all together both two laps so I took it a lot slower this time and it was a lot faster than almost dying both times and I even spray painted the pink you could see it coming from a mile away but just the way the ruts went obviously everyone did the same thing It's crazy because the tracks are actually super close to each other. So that's actually the cross country track running kind of on the outside of the tree. So you hear a lot of guys like someone catching up to me. And uh, we did 30 seconds apart or approximately, you know, 30 to 45 seconds apart between riders. And that was really nice to do. Pretty much every other race I do is, you know, your classic start line. Everyone goes at once, you're in your class. And, it's just chaos, it's dusty, you can't see anything around the corners. But um, with this one, 30 to 45 seconds, it was great. You pretty much rode alone, you passed a couple people, maybe a person passed you. It was just a fantastic little setup. I do enjoy the sprint enduro setups. Not compared to the kind of classic hair scrambles, which are, as you can guess, hair scrambling. 
but it was a, a whole different game really. It changed it completely. You see how tighter it is, how much more ready it is even from the video. There's a huge rut. It's all single track, like it's a lawn ball wide for the most part. Ready now, roof showing. Can get my pegs there. And climbing hills is another time you want to get high and like lean forward on top of your tank. You're not sitting on your seat this time, you're kind of hovering above the tank as much as you can. And it feels counterintuitive. Sometimes you gotta lean back a bit, get that traction on the back wheel, but then you back on that front, keeping that front end down, controlling where you're going. There's a huge amount of control in body position. I like those tree sections where it's like, you can go anywhere you want, left, right, left, right. No matter, doesn't matter the side of the tree, it all leads to the same place. It almost feels like we're going the same pace, but this was average 10K slower than the other lap, which is pretty impressive. It just feels like there's so much more happening. There's trees, there's tons left, right? Left. The other one was just so open and so fast in comparison. But I managed to keep a pretty solid pace. And although it's sometimes fun to catch up someone and try and push them and go a little faster, it's also super nice to just go your pace the entire time, especially when you catch up to them. There's nowhere for them to even pull over, even if they wanted to. This, you just didn't really catch up to anyone, and if you did, they were probably going significantly slower than you, that they either heard you coming, or they were so intimidated by you, they moved out of the way. Like, it isn't your typical race line where you know that guy's one yep. second behind you now. No, this guy's yep. now 30 to 45 seconds behind me. So like, unless that guy picks it up, passes me, and gets 30 to 40 seconds ahead of me, I've beat him in this race already by catching up to him. Yeah, even the wide open sections are a little ready up. Definitely not as wide as where the cross country course was. rebuild though this bike has been like fantastic and I'm like man why would I buy another bike originally I was gonna buy a whole specific you know GNCC cross-country style bike 250x from Cowie or the Honda 250 RX but I, <laughs> this thing runs great I'd love a bit bigger tank for those evening adventures on the gravel but honestly otherwise Back I'm like I don't know Yes, I could feel that by the end of the race, that back brake did not have the bite, which I wanted in it. And it was definitely the brake, not the not the terrain. Like, yeah, the terrain breaks down and stuff, but you can just feel you pushing it a little harder. And brake fade's a real thing, you know? That was a fun section. Hard chicane, uphill, run it out. Rocks on either side, so you kind of bounce them back and forth. And this is super steep as well, like steep climb all the way out. You're doing your best to keep as much speed as possible. You can see it's an average, a little bit slow here, but we're still keeping a solid pace. Like. The track was super well marked. It was cleared absolutely perfectly. You know, you have just enough branches that make it feel tight, 
but every once in a while some racetracks have just too many in your face slapping you and you're like man is this even the right way is this the cut proper way this was all very well cut back very well maintained but still wild enough that it was a full off-road right course what's the point you Yeah, the Prairie Spirit guys did an excellent job. I would highly recommend checking out the Sprint Enduro if that's what you're kind of into. I know some guys from Alberta came out and advertised their Sprint Enduro series, so that would be something interesting to do. If you can make more than a weekend now, if there's two races in a row, I'll have to look that into that and uh, see where we're at. And these great sections like this where it's just like, let it go, fifth gear, let's just go. Just to connect you back to the trails as well. Some racetracks, they like to put in big chicane, slow you down. It's like, ah, what's the point? We're going from point A to point B, getting back into the trails to finish this lap, you know? Into a steep decline. I feel like I go fast down the hills with the downhill mountain bike and I'm used to going downhill fast. Obviously these bikes have so much more weight to them you still have to like ease up a little bit. They've got a lot of room needed to stop, but I think I handled it pretty darn well. I feel like it could have gone faster, but in the moment I'm sure there's a reason it was going that pace. There we go, climb, climb, climb. Alright guys, what race should I hit up next? Is there any locally, let's talk, you know, any race within range of Manitoba, I want to start checking out more and more. I want to maybe get together and ride. It would be fun to actually get more kind of community events going on with this kind of stuff. Oh, don't again. Oh. <laughs> right at the bottom of that hill. Right out of the bottom of the hill, every lap, I'd come down that so fast, my front wheel would just lose it, and I'd aim straight for that, like, little puddle river there. That's a jump right there to the left. I didn't hit it. Thought about it on the last lap, chickened out. I think a guy behind me hits it. No, it must have been a different lap. And you just kind of get sent into the sky to land flat before some trees. Without seeing someone directly hit it, it just wouldn't have worked. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Fantastic race. Fantastic. And uh, subscribe for more.